Well, hello folks, welcome. Thanks for joining me on another episode of In The Loop TV. I'm your host, Don Grant, CTC Cutting Tool Counselor from Harvey Performance here with another exciting episode of In The Loop TV. What are we gonna talk about on this episode? Well, you know what I'm gonna talk about first. Hit the subscribe, hit the like button, please do that. Get it out of the way, just do it. Hit the formality, share it with anybody that you think might gain from this knowledge. We'd appreciate that. And it helps us get around to as many people as we possibly can so they can understand cutting tools a little bit better. This one is gonna be a continuation. We did the last one on composites. We are gonna continue composites. We're gonna dive into the tools that we actually use to cut composites and how that works. Now composites, when I say, we're gonna talk about laminate composites, we're gonna talk about standard composites, we're gonna talk about honeycomb, plastic, glass filled, we're gonna talk about all this. So stick around, stay tuned, and please come back for another exciting episode of In The Loop TV. Well, hey folks, thanks for coming back and what a show we have planned for you. If you like composites, if you need to understand how to cut composites, if you need to understand what tools to use, this is the show for you. We got an exciting thing planned a little bit later, our episode or our series, Machine Shops and Flip Flops. This is the first one, so stick around for that too. But what are we gonna do? We're gonna talk about composites and we're gonna talk about the cutting tools that are used to cut composites and how to use those and what's the difference. We talked briefly about it on the last episode. Now we're gonna dive into the specific cutters and see if we can't get you to understand when you use this one, when you use that one, maybe when you even use that one. Stick around, let's run to the shop. Let's talk about it next. Okay, folks. Let's keep all hands and arms inside the vehicle till this ride comes to a complete stop. Composites, there's a lot of cutting tools for composites and composite materials are made up of a lot of different things. We're gonna talk about these specifically. There's honeycomb composite, we're gonna dive into those materials. There's laminate composites, there's sandwich composites, there's plastic cutters that aren't filled for plastic cutters that we supply and there's also filled composites that we're gonna talk about too as well. So we need to dive into this and we need to go fast. And you know I'm known to talk fast. So pay attention, wake the kids, phone the neighbors. Let's go, let's hit it. This is on composites. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is laminate composites, laminate. Let's just understand laminate real quick. Laminate is a composite material. We said it's made up of two or more things in the last episode and they're laminate. So they're layered. They have different layers on it. Now we want to cut this with three different types of materials, or at least I'm going to talk about three different types of cutting tools to cut this. The first thing is, is if you're cutting any kind of laminate composite, you want to get that material off as quick as possible. Not any different than when you're cutting steel or aluminum. So what do you have? you have our max router cutters. These are a little bit rougher. You notice they're a little bit more staggered. These are going to remove your material the most. So if you see something in our website, CoreHog is the name. There's a plug. CoreHog is our branded composite cutters. Great for aerospace and a lot of different composites. If you see this, you want the max rougher. That's the rough one. It's going to remove a lot of material. Might delaminate, might have issues, but that's what you're going to want to use to remove as much material first. Then what you're going to do, did you see that I almost fell over? I'm actually standing on something right here and almost fell over backwards. Don't worry, I'm okay. In case you were worried at home, I'm all right. It's a two inch fall. I'll be fine. So the next one is kind of more of a finer tooth. It's still a diamond style, but what it's going to do, it's more of a finisher. So you're going to look for the closer diamond style. That's going to decrease more delamination and it's going to give you a cleaner cut. So you have the max style for roughing. And then if you look at this side, you can see these are a closer diamond style. They're going to work a lot better for CFRP. Rough, coarse, rough, hog as much material off, use a little bit finer cut for composite laminates because they have a tendency to pull apart. You want to use a finer style diamond. Now, if you really want to clean this up and you really want to get the biggest bang for your buck, that's when you're going to look at PCD, 
poly crystalline diamond cutters. Sharpest edge, it's gonna last the longest, it's gonna shear the cleanest, it's gonna give you the best results. That's where you wanna look at PCD. So we got three options, and we're just talking about laminate, we're gonna finish the laminate cutters off. You got the rougher, they're a little bit further apart, they're gonna hog that material off, they're gonna delaminate a little bit, probably not give you the cleanest cut, but then you go to the other diamond style, it's a little bit finer, puts it together, also comes in diamond style, because carbon is abrasive you can use those they're gonna clean up they're not gonna delaminate as well and you can get away with that for a good finish you really want the biggest bang for your buck go with PCD PCD is gonna give you the sharpest edge it's gonna clean it up you're not gonna delaminate you're gonna be burr free and you can run a lot quicker too I'm just telling you, you can run a lot faster higher surface foot higher feeds that's laminate let's move on to the next one Okay, so now let's talk about one of the things I'm kind of fond of, sandwich panels. Very fond of sandwiches. I love sandwiches. All over the country, great sandwiches. Everywhere you go, Canada and Mexico too. Everybody loves sandwiches, but we're talking about sandwich panels. Still in the composite family. Take a look at this. This is a sandwich panel. What does it mean? Well, it's got two outside things, call it the bread or whatever you want to call it, made up of a certain composite and then either a honeycomb or something else in the middle. So the middle component is sandwiched between two other materials can even be aluminums, can be some steels and stuff like that. That's what a sandwich panel is. Well, when you're cutting this, it brings up problems. Let's talk about how to cut it and what tools to pick for sandwich panels. So we're kind of looking at three tools in this category. Again, along the same lines of laminate, right? The first one is a sandwich panel cutter. Looks something like this. What we want to do with a sandwich panel is it comes in a shape and you have to make it to your final shape that you want. So what you have to do is hog out as much of that as you can. This is where your sandwich panel cutter is going to be your most versatile tool. You can see the diamond style on there. It's actually not diamond style. It's more of a rougher style. It's going to hog your material out to near net shape. When you get to near net shape, what you want to do is finish that. That's where you're looking at kind of compression cutters. What's a compression cutter? Compression cutter, if you watched the last video, basically takes those two sandwich panels on top and bottom and squishes them together as it's cutting. That's a compression cutter. It compresses the material because you don't want the bread or the outside of the sandwich panel to come apart. That's what a compression cutter is used for. You can also use compression cutters in laminates. Laminates have the little lines, they're sandwiched together too as well. You don't want to pull those, you want to compress it. Think about a compression cutter, exactly what it says. It compresses the material so it doesn't fray apart. The last tool that we're going to use in a sandwich panel is going to be a rebating tool. And it's not the rebate that you get at Menards or at Home Depot or something like that. This is a rebating tool. What does a rebating tool do? Well, if you look at a sandwich panel, we'll take a look at this real quick. You'll see it has a sandwich there and it's got a core in the middle. A rebating tool cuts the inside of the core. It rebates it in, it recesses it. So whatever that panel is, it fits in a component and recesses. So a rebating tool takes out the middle of the sandwich panel. The roughers, sandwich panel, cuts it to net shape. The compression keeps it together. The rebating tool will rebate out all along the sandwich panel to make that recess or counter bore. If you know what a counter bore is, it's a consistent counter bore. Those are the three types of tools that we just discussed in sandwich panels. Following along, because we're gonna run right to the next one. Okay, one of the more easy ones, unfilled plastics. Unfilled plastics, which means that's just a plastic material, um, like let's say a Delren or an Acetol or something like that, just a plastic material, which comes in different densities, just understand that, that we need to cut. First of all, it's plastic, it's very easy to cut. So you're gonna see a continuous edge. You don't see the roughers on this. Take a look at these tools, continuous edge. You'll also notice they don't have a lot of flutes. Why do they not have a lot of flutes? You can hog, it's plastic. You can take a big cut, you can take a big bite, and the chips 
are large, you're not going to generate a lot of heat. Be mindful of your surface foot because if you go too hot with the surface foot, you're going to start melting the plastics. Come in ball nose form so you can do shape on it. Single flute, two flutes, up style, which means they pull the chips up, and down style. So unfilled plastics, I don't want to spend that much time on them. We have a variety of tools for unfilled, softer plastics. It's where the plastics start getting filled that it gets a little bit more difficult. So again, take a look at the tools for unfilled plastic. Continuous cutting edge, not really chip breakers, high rakes, shear very cleanly, okay? And they usually don't have a coating on it, usually bright, no coating, you don't need it, you're not generating that much heat, and they work very well. Please consult us if you have any questions on any more of that. And now the last one when we come to milling tools, and I'm gonna talk briefly about some drilling tools. What we're trying to do with composites is reduce delamination, fraying, all that other stuff from the last episode. So we're gonna talk about one of the most, I don't wanna say difficult, but the one that intrigues me the most, which is honeycomb cutters. So what's honeycomb material? Take a look at this. Kinda looks like a bee's nest, right? Honeycomb, it has those little thin walls and it's used for lightweight but heavy strength. These thin walls, when you're cutting it and roughing and finishing it, it takes a little bit and a little bit of know-how how to do that. It also comes in a variety of materials. We're mainly talking about composite, but it does come in aluminum, it does come in steel too as well. So let's talk about three different types of tools to cut honeycomb material and maybe a couple little tips and tricks on how to do that that we can help you out with. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna rough it. Like everything else, when you're getting material and it comes in bulk, you wanna get it to net shape or you wanna get it close to net shape before it goes into whatever component. You gotta rough it. Usually roughing tools are a lot different than finishing tools, especially with honeycomb, because you're gonna start rolling things over, you're not gonna get a sheer clean on that, but you wanna remove as much material as possible. That's why we have roughing tools for honeycomb. Different shapes, got chip breakers, I don't wanna say chip breakers, but like a rougher, knuckle style rougher on there, so it shears cleanly, it shears fast, and you can get it down to near net shape before you go and finish it. Now when you finish it, that's where the fun comes in. That's where the fun comes in, and we're gonna talk about slicer finishers. We have different sizes. It's more of like kind of a modular tool that has a slicer on the bottom. So when you look at these finishers, take a look at these. It has like a knife on the bottom of them, and some of the finishers are just a slicer. It's like a sheer slicer on that. So how does it work? Well, that honeycomb needs to be cleaned off. It needs to be sheared, almost cut with like a knife. That slicer on the bottom of the rougher or on the bottom of the tool will cut the material at its edge of where you're trying to remove that. It'll cut it clean. It won't roll it over. It won't smash it. It cuts it from the bottom and makes it clean. Now, when you're just using a slicer that doesn't have the rougher, it's great for finishing the top of the material. You can slice that honeycomb nice and clean and you're not putting that pressure in there and you can finish it a lot easier. So it's kind of more like a modular tool with a slicer on the bottom. But, but hear me, understand me, when you're programming this, it's a lot different than when you're programming conventional tools. It's not the same. You have to put a lead angle on there. You want to climb cut. You want to come into your material a little bit different. It's a different approach. We can help with that. I'm not going to go into programming slicers and cutting honeycomb, but I do want to say I think we are one of the experts in the industry on cutting honeycomb and having the tools for honeycomb. So you need that help. Even support and programming will be more than happy to help you get there. But slicers are different. Honeycomb is hard because when you're roughing it, it wants to roll over and it wants to get delaminate de and, and it just looks horrible with conventional tools. Okay, bonus material on composite. Let's talk about drills. Let's talk about drilling. We're gonna talk about four different drills. We're gonna talk about it fast. The first one I wanna talk about is going to be a dagger drill. The second one I'm gonna talk about is gonna be an eight facet drill for composites. Then we're going to talk about a tapered reamer 
and we're going to close it up with my favorite which is the step drill for composites. When you're drilling composite material, you have a lot of issues. You get delamination, breakthrough pressure, uh, fraying on the top. You gotta fix that. So let's talk about the first tool to first. It's a dagger drill. First of all, dagger drill, more for hand drilling. It'll work in a CNC machine. It'll reduce the delamination. It'll give you a clean hole. Not my first choice for the cleanest hole, but a dagger drill helps in composite material and a laminate material. Then, we have an eight facet drill for composite. Eight facet. A facet is a grind. So that's one, two, three, four facets on one side, four facets on the other. Eight facets at different angles. What does it do? When you use an eight facet tool, it reduces the pressure on drilling. Anytime you're drilling composite, you don't want pressure. Those things fray, they delaminate, you have problems. We put an eight facets on there, facet, so you can actually drill quicker and you can drill freer and you'll get less delamination. So an eight facet, facet drill is good for that. Then we go with the good old tapered reamer. Tapered reamer. Well now, you're drilling the hole, CNC machine, you're drilling it and reaming it to a very tight tolerance. This tool is gonna to give you about the tightest tolerance that you can get. It's a tapered reamer, it's in tighter tolerances, it cuts clean, it doesn't delaminate, it cleans up anything at the end of it. Now, my favorite is the step drill. If you're really trying to reduce the delamination at the bottom of the hole and you want to go with a drill that's going to do that, look at a step drill that we offered through our brand Core Hog. And the reason for that is you'll get the cleanest shear that you can get because the pilot or the step on there makes your hole, creates all the force, and then that step, finished diameter, cleans it out on the outside. It's a lot less force and it gives you, in my opinion, the cleanest hole. So there we have all the drills. Didn't dive into it that much, but you have your dagger drill. You have your eight facet drill, reduces pressure. You have a drill reamer that's going to give you a closer size. And then you have my favorite, which is the step drill, which is going to reduce your delamination when it goes through the hole. Great options. Good things. If you have more questions, please give us a buzz. Well, hey folks, guess what time it is? It's time for machine shops and flip flops. It's summer. This is where we take one of our local application engineers, experienced application engineers, and we ask them for that little tip of the month or tip of the day. This month, it comes from our local Michigan application engineer, Don Doyle. Don, what's the tip of the month? Aloha, everybody. Don Doyle, Harvey Performance Company, here for an episode of Machine Shops and Flip Flops. So I'm from Michigan and I have no clue what flip flops are. Nine months out of the year wearing wool socks and boots. So, but I've been drafted to do an episode of Machine Shops and Flip Flops. More importantly, here to give you a tip of the day. So that tip is when you're machining material that's flame cut or has scale, Make your first pass a conventional cut. See a tremendous increase in tool life. I'm Don Doyle. That's your tip of the day for machine shops and winter boots. Flip flops, machine shops and flip flops. Have a great day. I thought my outfit was kind of funny for this episode. Nice outfit, Don. Don Doyle out in Michigan, tip of the month, flame cut or scaled material, use a conventional cut. Great tip, Don. We appreciate it. Look forward to next month when we solicit another application engineer from Harvey Performance for the tip of the month. This has been an episode of Machine Shops and Flip Flops. Well, hey, 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 that's it for this one. That's a wrap, folks. That's it on composites. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about the tools that go into composite. Hopefully you had a little bit of fun with our episode of Machine Shops and Flip Flops. Stay tuned for the next one too when we grab another application engineer and we get him and put him on the spot so we have more people to make fun of instead of just myself. So come back for that one. Thanks again for joining us. Before I go, three things and life will never get away from death, taxes, and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week, folks.